this is Mato. In this video I will show you a very beautiful chess game. This is the game between Zigbert Tarasch and Jax Mises that was played in Munich in 1916. Tarasch had white pieces and he started with d4. Mises played e6. And now if Tarasch continued with c4 and Mises played d5, we would have Queen's Gambit or Queen's Gambit declined opening. But after e6, Tarasch played e4. And after d5, we have French defense. Knight to c3, pawn takes pawn on e4, knight takes on e4, knight to d7, planning knight from g to f6, knight to f3, knight from g to f6, bishop to d3, bishop to e7, and Tarash castle at kingside. Knight takes knight on e4. Bishop takes knight. Knight to f6, attacking the bishop. And of course, bishop to d3 was played. It is black to move. Castling should have been considered. Instead, black played b6, planning to fianchetto the bishop to b7. But now, c6 is a very tender square. Knight to e5 was played with a plan to explore the weakness. d4 pawn is a taboo. For example, if queen takes on d4, then bishop to b5 is check and then queen takes a queen. So after knight to e5, we have castling a king's side. Knight to c6. Let's go back. How about after knight to e5, bishop to b7? Is that better? Perhaps you would have this continuation then. Check. And then black is losing his castling rights. Or oh, how about bishop to d7? Is that better? Then queen to f3 could be uncomfortable. After castling, rook to d1. But this may be better than move played in the game for black. Let's have a look. In the game we have castling kingside, knight to c6, forking the queen and the bishop, queen to d6. And now Tarash is very clever. He is not rushing to capture the bishop, but he is improving the position of his queen. Threat is knight takes bishop, winning the rook. Bishop to d7. Of course, bishop to b7 doesn't work at all. Then knight takes on e7 check. And after queen takes, white is winning a piece. So after queen to f3, bishop to d7. And now knight takes bishop check. Queen takes on e7. And of course, very logical follow-up. Bishop to g5, developing the bishop pinning the knight and connecting the rooks. Rook from a to c8. Rook from f to e1, placing rook on semi-open file and aligning it with queen. Rook from f to e8. It is white to move. What would you suggest to white in this position? This is what Tarash played. Threat is bishop takes on f6. And after say queen takes, queen takes on h7. Black was in a panic mode. Queen to d6 was played. What do you think of this move? 
h6. How would the white continue if h6 was played? If you wish, you can pause this video and you can try to find the best move for white. Ready? Taking the knight, bishop to e3, d2. This is the winning move. Bishop takes pawn, and after pawn takes bishop, queen takes on h6, and black can't defend this position. Rook left is coming. Okay, so in the game we have queen to d6, making room for king to escape. Bishop takes knight, pawn takes bishop, and now Tarash is not rushing to capture the pawn. Queen to h6, so black king can't escape. If, for example, c5 is played, just a random move to show you what is going on, then we would have bishop takes on h7, and after king to h8, bishop to g6, king to g8, check and check mate. So, black played f5, defending the pawn on h7. But the rook lift is decisive. Rook to e3, threat is rook to g3. Black captured the pawn on d4. It is white to move. Pick your win. I think the first move that comes to mind is rook to g3 check but Tarash goes for a slow torture c3 and black resigned for example queen to g4 is losing to rook to g3 what else queen to h8 is losing to rook to g3 check that is why, in this position, black resigned. What a game. What do you think of this game? And that is all. I hope that you enjoyed watching this video. I wish you good luck with your chess. And bye for now.